As we continue our conversation about leadership, I would love to know what your advice is, Dean and Pete, on how you can increase your own leadership presence within yourself. So if you talk to as many leaders as Pete and I have over the years, you keep hearing ideas like fraud complex and imposter syndrome, where people feel like stepping up into leadership is being something they aren't. So the simple first starting point of your own leadership presence is to be authentic and a little more transparent. You don't have to become something else. It's it's the responsibility to try to guide a group of people forward that makes you a leader. So we really like thinking about what is my, the self-awareness of what your actual personality is and bringing more of who you are. And this is really critical because we're all selling something in a way. We're all selling ourselves. Leaders are selling their leadership skills and their perspective and their value. Team members are selling their value as contributors to the company. It's absolutely critical the way we see it it, for everyone to recognize their value and not just recognize it, but like emotionally embody it. If you question your value as a leader, then the people who hired you will go, well, man, you know, I thought I saw something in this person, but they don't even see it in themselves. I don't, I, I'm starting to second guess myself. Leaders need to recognize that those people who spotted something in them were right. The value that they saw in you were absolutely right. So just accept that and embody it and bring that value to every conversation, to every presentation, because that's what they hired you for. Now, there's a really, really big zone to understand that I'm going to try to make super simple. People don't know what to do with emotions once they're a leader because they think they always have to come across strong. What you have to understand is that joy and celebration and affirmation go together. And a lot of people fail to feel that joy when they're affirming the things that are going right or the good things that they're seeing. Leaders don't think there's any room to ever have sadness. And sad is a key ingredient to empathizing with the pain that your people or the people, your people help, you know, your clients have. And so the ability to have empathy and use sadness to help uh, propel and deepen that experience. And mad energy, if I'm angry at you, mad is a bad energy, but if I'm speaking to what's really important, you can charge a moment with the power of the mad energy, which shows conviction and seriousness. And it, it's, it's how you get on fire. And, and I think it's really important that leaders start to recognize what the emotions are for and use them for what they're for. Use joy to affirm, sad for empathy, uh, the mad energy, to show sternness and seriousness. And if if you can't harness those powers, you're gonna be that cold, you know, opaque leader. And so grasping emotions is key. And consistent with that, so that's emotional truth. What Dean was just talking about is emotional truth and emotional, the ability to, to, um, to, to show people what you actually feel. There's also an intellectual truth that I want to give leaders permission to to exhibit. A lot of leaders feel like it's their job to always be perfect, always have an answer, always know what to say. And it really is totally okay to say, you know what, I am not sure what the right answer is right now. And let me think out loud with you. Part of the value of that is recognizing that you are a good processor and being willing to process in front of your audience, whether it's the the team that reports to you or the people who hired you or your peers, it's showing that you value yourself as an active processor right now. And sometimes you don't have the opportunity to pre-think something and figure out what your perspective is. You can value your ability to come up with a really good perspective in the moment and show people how you think. Now, we talk a lot about this idea of a presence champion, and I just want to hit one ingredient about leadership that's often overlooked. When I had bosses, my large experience of my bosses were 
I'm either going to be judged favorably or not. It was all about being judged favorably. One of the things that I discovered on the movie set, which I'm sure you gentlemen also have experienced, when you supercharge a team, it's because they start to view you as their champion, not their judge. So when it comes to the leadership presence, ask yourself, what can I do to help communicate to my team that I'm going to fight for them? I am their champion. And that takes away the edge of, of the assumption that you are my judge and I must prove my worthiness. You bring that to your team and you're going to have a team that will fight for you because you are fighting for them. That's great. So it's like no matter who's on your team and no matter what's going on right now, no matter what you're saying is you are defending the unity and the rightness of the whole team. You're not picking sides. You are saying this is the team. <laughs>